What the heck is elasticity? Well, I mean, that was the title of the video, but it's a term in economics that might scare some people. But today, using some cool Minecraft gameplay, we're going to learn both supply and demand elasticity. So welcome to Elasticity, explained through Minecraft. So to begin, the definition of elasticity in economics is the sensitivity of one variable to a change of another. This definition honestly doesn't really clear up too much, so let's do what we do best and learn through an example. Starting with demand elasticity within our favorite village, the Leaf Village. In the Leaf Village, let's say that there's a lumberjack that sells wood for 4 emeralds. However, because wood is so common in the Leaf Village, there are a lot of different sellers that sell wood for a similar price. Say while the lumberjack gets 10 customers in his shop each day, one day he decides to up the price to 5 emeralds. Suddenly, he loses half of his customers and now the demand for his wood plummets. This kind of demand is called elastic demand as he increased his price by 1 emerald and his demand plummeted. This shows a high sensitivity to the price and a very stretchy demand, which is kind of why it's called elastic demand. Now the other way is true as well. If the lumberjack decides to lower his price to 3 emeralds, he will attract a ton of new customers. This elasticity is mostly determined by the good that someone sells. Let's look at it in the perspective of a villager looking to buy wood. That one lumberjack in the example is not his only option. If that guy decides to up his price to 5 emeralds, he can really just go buy wood from someone else. So if there are a lot of substitutes in the market, then elasticity is generally high. Now another reason can be that the good is just not necessary. Say that a person named Zero goes to a restaurant and on their dessert menu, he sees that they have increased the price of cake from 6 emeralds to 8. Well since he's already eaten his food, he just decides not to buy the cake that day. If the item is an addition, not a necessity, it also tends to have a higher elasticity. In this elastic situation, the power of the price lays in the hands of the consumers over the firm. Going back to the lumberjack, that guy has little say in what he wants the price to be. If he wants any customers coming, he needs to follow generally what the market says. He cannot set a price on his own. Now in cases like these, the lumberjack will gain much more profit if he were to lower his prices, since he will attract more customers which makes up for the price decrease. Now let's look on the other side. Say that a person named Set brews potions in his medical facility. He has a potion that treats the wither effect. And for someone with the wither effect, they must drink the potion every week in order to stay healthy. Let's look at the criteria for this item as well. Is it necessary? Definitely, for those with the wither effect. Does it have a lot of substitutes? No, Set is one of the few firms that brews this potion. So then these two characteristics makes this potion demand inelastic. Now this means that even if Set changes the emerald price on this potion, the same amount of people are more or less going to come and buy it. It may change very slightly, but not nearly as much as the wood. In this situation, the firms have the power over the consumers. They are able to control and change the price to their liking and not face lower sales because of it. In this case, firms raising the prices will actually increase their profits. But you know, that would be just so evil from set, right? Anyways, now that we know what the demand side looks like, let's look at the supply side. The elasticity of supply indicates how much the quantity of an item that is supplied changes when the price changes. In this case, we are talking about a firm that supplies some sort of item. Let's say that we look at a company called Explosion Inc. Now Explosion Inc makes TNT, and when the price of TNT increases, they would like to increase their production to take advantage of that while when the price decreases, they decrease their production. So supply elasticity is just a measure of how easy it is for a company to change its production rates when they have to respond to price changes. Let's look at a company called Zero's Bake Shop. The shop, owned by Zero, makes bread and sells it. But lately, the overall price of bread has increased. So Zero makes more bread to sell. Now for Zero, it's actually quite easy for him to make more bread because of three big reasons. It's made very quickly, it only has one ingredient, 
And if he hires more people, he can teach them how to make bread in like two seconds. All of these features allow the bake shop to have an elastic supply. Zero is able to change how much he makes very easily to respond to the market. Now let's look at the other end of the spectrum with Explosion Inc. Here let's introduce TNT and compare it to bread. TNT for one is a lot harder to make. It takes a lot more time because it's explosive and needs to be done with care. Now it also has more ingredients. And if Explosion Inc hires more people, they need to train them properly with the explosive materials. They can't just do it like zero. All of these make TNT and Explosion Inc have a very inelastic supply. And they have a much harder time adapting to the market when price fluctuations occur on TNT. And that's about all I have today. Elasticity is a fascinating subject, and it's one that is extremely important to know before making changes to a business. It's all about knowing what kind of item you sell and knowing your competition. Anyways, if you own a big business and you benefited from this video, I would like 10% of the funds you earn given to me and send it to this address. Thank you.